way animals come out at night. Buggers, queens, fairies, dopers, junkies, sick, venal. Someday a real rain will come and wash all this scum off the streets. I don't believe that one should devote his life to morbid self-attention. I believe that someone should become a person like other people. to some. Some won't even take spooks. Don't make no difference to me. And just endless subplots. Um, a totally mental situation and it would be impossible for me to think of it, how to make that into a documentary. It would be a perfect soap opera but it's not really time or the place to be doing that really, is it? Well, you, you've been called a media manipulator and I quote, the idiot savant of pop culture, not to mention a fiercely independent boy genius. Now, these are some of the descriptions you've been labelled with, you know, is it a bit over the top? Oh, it's better than uh, Alan Hall Make My Hamster, isn't it? Um, oh, you know, I mean, the thing is, uh, boy, genius, so, you, know, you count up to ten and add BAT in the pop business and you're a genius. Uh, it's just the people that think in headlines and cliches and, you know, media language, media speak, isn't it? But you've been called arrogant, obnoxious, hard to work with. Comment. I mean, all that, I mean, that, yeah, I'll tell you about that. I think it, it comes from when we were very young and we are starting out. Uh, you know, I determined early on that we were not going to go off 
to the London multinationals, cap in hand. Uh, we had to literally drag the media up from London to here. Um, it had never been done, done before we turned the whole thing around. And when you go out to, I think, open up a, a door that's been shut in your face, then you, you have to be tough. And I, I think that's been screwed as, as difficult, arrogant, obnoxious. I mean, in, in fact, I think we're all very vulnerable and, and our, our arrogance was probably our armor plating at the time. Um, but you were also kicking against this uh, Scottish inferiority complex that suffocates us all up here. I mean, it's just hideous. I mean, you know, we're just an inferior little provincial nation. And, and, you know, if you're going to go out there into the world and get attention to yourself, you can't go out with that kind of attitude. And after the postcard... Boom. I'll tell you a thing, I'll t I'll tell you, I mean, it's, it's probably simpler than that. I mean, we live in a country where um, backstabbing and, and gossip mongering have become a cultural trait, really. And, um, you know, thanks to the, the, the good work of tabloid press. I think that's probably a lot more to do with anything. Yeah. Now, after, after the... The success of Postcard, I guess there came the, the gold rush, if you like, Glasgow oblique Scottish bands rushing after the money. The gathering rush. What do you mean by gathering? Oh, um, I'll tell you exactly what I mean by gathering, Alan. Um, gathering, um, adjective relating to or engaged in a headlong rush. Um, it's from the Greek, alluding to the garden in Swine, Matthew 8, 28. Okay? Um, no, what was the question? The Glasgow... The gold rush. Gold that came rush, the, the whole yeah. silly nonsense that happened in the 80s. Um, it was just a sad and sorry farce, wasn't it? I mean, I just find it very disappointing to watch the whole thing. Um, especially after, as I said, we went out there in the early 80s and said, you know, art is what matters. You know, don't just go running after the buck. Um, don't go off to these multinationals. Don't sell your soul. And um, what happened? They just, the people that followed us, there's not one of them that's that bloody backbone, you know. Who the hell do you think you're dealing with? Some old slut on 42nd Street. Well, I'll in case you didn't happen to notice it, the big Texas Longhorn bull. I'm one hell of a gorgeous chick. Well, now, Kathy, you heard it. At 28 years old, you think you can come up here and pull this kind of crap up here? Well, you're out of your mind. I'm going to kill you with my bad. And they just choose to ignore the politics of the situation and they just rather take the, the music and the look of the arms just and run off with it. And, um, you know, and that got more and more silly as the decade wore on and you've got a situation where you have these fake imitation Springsteen type groups in Glasgow and um, jazz funkers that, you know, their music's like a, a weak version of Shack Attack and like, out there talking about passion and commitment and all the 80s buzzwords done up to the nines and a designer clothes and what have you. And, uh, oh, bony baloney, you know? You wouldn't be talking about Deacon Blue or Hue and Cry. You might think that, Alan, I couldn't possibly call it. Um, no, I mean, it, it's, it's just pop culture. It's the history of pop culture. It's go back to the 50s and for Little Richard, every Little Richard, you've got 12 Cliff Richards. Um, uh, yeah, it's just fakery and uh, phonies, that's, that's the world we live in. And, um, you know, it's only the romantic part of me that's, that's worked up about this kind of stuff. I mean, the cynical, m most of me is cynical enough to realise that this is I just, uh, we have to put the string out here. Can we have to do this again? The string thing made it, it was meant to come. Thank um, you. Um, I'm a man who takes pride in his appearance. Only consideration first. Tall. Oh, definite. Tall. Oh. Someone I can talk to in bed. A good sense of humor. Not a friend of theirs. A Texas oil man. Aggressive. A door type. A rebel. I'm really sick and spinning.
were in your face, overkill kind of product launch or whatever you call it. And uh, I mean, whether it's radium nuclear washing powder or sweat, the uh, very earth 70s rock group or whatever, you know, it's just like, you know. Um, I've always liked to go look for things and I, th I think the, 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 you get more of a reward for searching for things. I, I mean, people just get so blasé when they've got it all at their end of a stick, you know? You know what I mean? You I don't, do you? <laughs> I think I know what you well, mean. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I saw Paul Quinn and the, in, and the Independent Group at the Old Athenaeum, and I, I was mightily impressed with what I saw. It was a show called Cowboy Resonating. Mm -hmm. Why resonating? Resonating? Well, you don't know what resonating means or what? You tell me. Oh, there we go. Um, Okay. Right, fuck it. No more dicks now. Maybe if I put them in my mouth. Maybe if I put them in my mouth. No, I just started to jail that night, I think. We've been working on it all year, really. We've been putting a group around Paul, you know, and you've got this, you know, you sell this fantastic lineup now, and, uh, now it's a case of putting the team around the group and the label, you know, the, the lighting people and sound people and designers and photographers and just get a creative gang together so that we can um, achieve the things we want to do without having to go outside and look for other people, you know, that are not contained. And, um, you know, when we finally surface, I think it'll be, you know, something. I bet you get one thing in common. I bet you all know something. Little. The, the, the other act you're working with is the next in number nine with yeah. Davy Henderson, the, the former fire engine, and you even had uh, a couple of singles of the week recently. Do you think um, Henderson's time has come at long last? Although he's said singles of the week all his life, hasn't he? <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's really focused at the moment and uh, it's exciting. Yeah, I mean, well, you've seen him as well. You've seen him. He's playing at the moment in these small places, like 200 people in clubs and that. And for me, that's the best bit of everything you know, at that, that stage. And they do have that factor, don't they? It's, uh, yeah, it's quite exciting. The records are really great as well. I mean, it's not always made the records that you know, we expected them to. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a good artist. I mean, if there's something worth doing, it's worth doing well. I mean, of course, we are obsessive with the details of what we do. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I look around me and I see everything is so half-baked and half-hearted and that annoys me. It annoys me that the media that deal with music and art is so flabby and lazy and that they're totally catered for by press offices things like that. And no one goes out to find anything, to discover anything. They want it all just sent in with a phone number to ring or a fax number. Um, no, I mean, I just think people don't make any effort. I mean, it's a symptom of the times we live in. It's a political world we live in. I mean, everything's geared against making any effort. And if you don't make any effort, you don't get anything out of anything. <laughs> Ten years later, you and the postcard are back. Cynics would say, well, Horn's stuck for something to do. Well, but I'm not going to sit and listen to Cynics or read Cynics or watch Cynics on TV because life is too short. At the moment, there's quite a nice range of uh, postcard t-shirts, one of which says, in the meantime, before failure, 
<laughs> What's that all about? That was uh, that was just a, a play on uh, back where we're doing a, a, an event at the Tramway Art Gallery that was linked to the European design and things. And in the meantime, before failure, there's a phrase that um, we use in the manufacturing business, and the MT is, is like the, the time built in before our washing machine breaks, you know, like the gantry lifespan. And it just seems to me that everyone these days has that kind of stamp stuck on them, you know. Um, and it's just because it was a day design, you know, so it seemed a good one to use it for that. You know. Postcards remain one of the biggest cults in music without necessarily overt success. Is Alan Horn and Postcard Records scared of success? Scared of success? Scared of failure? I don't know. What, I it's don't a know. nice little club for those who are in it. Uh -huh. Is it going to spoil the club's success? Well, I think success spoils things, yeah. But I don't think I'm scared of success. I mean, I, I feel I'm successful. I've, I've always felt successful. When the revolution comes, why shouldn't Alan Horn be shot? <laughs> what a crummy question, Alan. <laughs> Give me an answer. Give me a crummy yeah. answer. No, I should be shot sure, like everyone else. You're guilty. What? You tell me. Smoke another. You're a cowboy. You're okay. You're okay.
saddest thing I have ever If you don't, don't do right, right. 